showroom. I've now walked around it. It is a remarkable thing, and I know that you have a, a vehicle uh, right behind you uh, that uh, is, I, I should say, on sale. Uh, we should talk about deliveries in a second, but on sale. It's nice to see you, Peter. Nice to see you, Andrew, and, and great that you could actually see this in person. This is an awesome new studio which we're opening here this week in the meat packing district of Manhattan. I uh, invite everyone to come and see this car in its natural setting in this beautiful new studio in Manhattan. I have so many questions to ask you uh, about the vehicle behind you, about deliveries, about uh, capital expenditures and the like, but I, I don't know if you could hear us uh, on the way into this segment. Um, Leslie was talking about sort of the, the spate of SPACs, uh, a number of which have fallen in, in, in terms of valuation, uh, in, including uh, Lucid's before the DSPAC. And I'm curious how you think investors should think about that and how investors should think more, more broadly about the valuations of, of EV companies? I think the real differentiator here, the long-term value proposition of Lucid, is our technology, our underlying technology. Behind me, we have the Lucid Air here. And this is the first electric car which will achieve over 500 miles range. And it's going to do that through the prowess of Lucid's in-house technology, vertically integrated technology, and vertically integrated manufacturing capabilities. And that's what differentiates us from others who don't have a technology. And the long-term value of Lucid is in its tech. More broadly, though, we've even seen the, the, the shares of Tesla uh, be challenged over the past several months. What do you make of, of the way the market is valuing EVs? I think there's a recognition, a cognizance, a widespread uh, acknowledgement, finally, that EVs are the future. And the pendulum is finally going to swing now. And one or two of the remaining doubts, uh, really, which are restricting the widespread adoption of electrification, are range anxiety and cost of entry. Now, with range anxiety, we've addressed that with the Lucid Air, over 500 miles range, we can right. uh, re replace co range anxiety with range confidence. The other thing is we have the most efficient car with the most efficient technology in the world, which enables us to go up to four and a half miles per kilowatt hour. And that efficiency will drive down the cost of future models. And that's what I'm particularly interested in. That's my right. passion to mass industrialize electric cars through right. ultra high technology. Peter, Peter, all of that technology is very, very exciting, but, but I just go back to the valuation issue, which is I think that investors are trying to grapple mm. with, what, with, with what and what kind of multiple um, they should be assigning and how they should be valuing these companies. Tesla obviously has a remarkable valuation that, that effectively means that it is uh, bigger uh, by market cap uh, that if you were to combine almost, almost all of the current car makers uh, together. The question is, you know, you, you look at the valuation of your company, but look at you, you look at the valuation of others, there's a lot more competition in this space. Do you think that, that investors should be using the valuations of some of the, the older car company models, the sort of classic companies, the Volkswagens, the General Motors of the world? Should they be, should they be looking at a Tesla when they look at you? What, what, what do you think is the appropriate way to think about it? It's a fascinating point you raise. Um, I mean, Tesla's commanding its valuation uh, as, as future-looking. And also, because it is in a preeminent position, it is the preeminent technology company in the EV field. That's why it commands such a high market cap. And there's now going to be two runners in that race. Lucid is going to join as a new force in EV technology. And that puts the U.S. in an incredibly healthy position, having two front-running EV tech companies in Tesla and Lucid. And I think it's the, again, it's the technology that justifies those valuations. It's no longer the commodity valuation, how many cars you build, that determines the value of a company. It's the technology and the future potential of that tech. And our tech has got the future potential to right. truly mass industrialize electric cars.
Peter, though, how do you think then about a General Motors? They're aiming to produce, I'm looking here, uh, about uh, by, by 2035, they want to have new, 30 new plug-in models arriving and, and 30 new pl plug-in models arriving by 2025. And, and they plan to make a $35 billion investment. Well, I, I really welcome what GM is doing and that commitment, but let's see how successful they are in implementing that. Uh, you know, there's no such thing, really, as a market for electric cars. People often say, oh gosh, that market is being saturated. There's a market for cars, and the more uh, better electric cars that come along, the more the penetration into the car market will be occupied by EVs. And that's why I welcome the competition, particularly Mercedes is coming now with the, uh, the EQS. And this is great because Lucid Air can be compared at the top table with the manufacturer that invented the car, Mercedes-Benz, with the best offering from Stuttgart. And we, there's always room at the top. It's mighty crowded down below. Right. Uh, Peter, uh, you've said that you plan to put vehicles into production in the uh, second half of the year. Uh, the second half of the year begins uh, next month. So uh, what's it look like right now for you? Well, we, we, we achieved a landmark um, red letter day last Friday. Uh, we started building our quality validation run, production run of cars. We've completed our pre-production run very successfully and last Friday June the 18th the last working day of spring we commenced our quality validation build at our state-of-the-art factory in Arizona and there's a big difference here Andrew the quality validation build cars are the cars which ultimately we will sell directly to customers once we've got the quality right and that build is currently underway this is a big step forward in our mission to industrialize Lucid Air. You've said that uh, you plan to deliver 577 vehicles this year. You have 10,000 plus reservations. Are, are you on schedule? Absolutely, we're bang on schedule. And as soon as the quality is right, we're on schedule to release those cars, what I believe will be the best car in the world to proud new owners in the second half of this year. We're absolutely on track for that. And, and, and I said 10,000 plus reservations. Uh, what, what do the reservations look like right now? Uh, over 10,000 and growing. It's very heartening. And we're responding to the uptake and increasing demand for Lucid by accelerating. Uh, we, we're accelerating 350 million of investment, bringing that forward to get better vertical integration in our plant throughout 22 and 23. Right. We're also announcing an additional 6 to 7% overall investment in our plan, in our business plan between 2021 and 26. And with that money, we'll be able to accelerate the growth of the company, secure and de-risk the, uh, the risk factors, and also provide greater flexibility uh, in terms of our mix of product. We're going to incorporate an extra 2.7 million square feet into our factory by the end of 2023. Uh, I'm very bullish about the future uh, that this secures. Peter, uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we look forward to following your progress and hope to talk to you again very, very soon. Thanks. And please come down to... We will. We will. Okay. Sounds a nice invite. Uh, still to come, Arthur Brooks.